morning. Good morning. I uh, want to thank everybody for, for coming today. And, uh, you know, I mentioned a month, two months ago, I'm not real good with times. I, I mentioned that I believe we're in a bit of a battle right now here at Step 7. Okay, and I, I believe that with all my heart. But don't get me wrong, I also believe that's a good thing, okay? Uh, Satan wouldn't mess with us if he didn't dislike us, folks. And that's a very tame word for hate, okay? We have an enemy out there, and he does not like what we're doing around here. And we've kind of had this this theme lately of raising the standard here at Step 7. Talking about Christ-centered spiritual growth. Okay, that's what we're about around here. And uh, I'm thinking that we might be in a little bit of a season of pruning. You know, that's fine. Because after the pruning comes what? Fruit. The fruit. Alright? Um, you know, when I put together a, a sermon anymore, it's basically I just go spend time with Jesus. That's, that's my sermon prep. Okay? I, I get a topic... And then I pray, and I just spend a lot of time during the week, just me and the Lord, okay? And as the years have gone by, it's just kind of turned in, he gives me some bullet points. You know, that's the extent of my sermon right there. There's a few bullet points on there, okay? And these are just things I want to make sure that I don't forget during my time up here, okay? Uh, today's message... I, I'm not real sure where I'm going to end up here, guys, okay? I could go just about anywhere here today, so humor me. <laughs> uh, stick with me. I, uh, I believe that we are in a bit of a season of pruning here, and that's just fine, okay? Because as Brian just said, I, I look around the room right now, and I see miracles. It's been kind of an emotional few weeks for me. We, uh, we lost a brother this last week. I think most of you know Andy Rhodes passed away. And uh, last night they had a little service for him. Bruce and, and Brian and I were there. And his mother came up to me weeping. And she said, uh, she said, you know, Pastor, he loved the Lord, but he couldn't beat the heroin. What we do around here, folks, is incredibly important. I, uh, I want to thank the Lord for this ministry. Brian reads our, our verse of the day today out of Psalm 31, a verse that King David writes. And he says, into your hands I commit my spirit. Okay? When I, when I read that verse... It makes me think, and you don't need to go there, but it makes me think of a verse that King David's son, Solomon, wrote out of Proverbs, okay? Into your hands I commit my spirit, and that is because I trust in you with all of my heart, Lord. And I lean not on my own understanding, okay? 
That's Proverbs 3, 5. We followed up with verse 6, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing this. It says, in all your ways I acknowledge him, and he will make my paths straight. Okay? <coughs> Last week, my, my bride and I, we kind of took off for the day, and, and Kirk, my buddy Kirk came over here and preached, and I, I watched it. And I love his teaching. He's a wonderful speaker. It was funny. I, I saw it online, and here's some guy standing in the pulpit with sweats and a hoodie on. <laughs> Brian, too, was in sweats and a hoodie, and I'm, I talked with Kirk earlier in the week, and, you know, I, I, after watching the, the sermon, I, I spoke with him, and I said, you know, who's that guy? Who's that guy in my pulpit? wearing sweats and a hoodie, and it hit me real fast, you know, PT, who, who do you, you know, that's not your pulpit, that's his pulpit, okay, and it was a wonderful message, and Kirk has his ministry, it's called Free Indeed, I think most of you know about that, and he teaches these I am concepts, okay, and the overarching method of his sermon was I am what, enough, I am enough, but he also teaches all these different I am's through his course, and I've written them down here. They're I am blessed, I am strong, I am forgiven, I am healthy, I am free, I am gifted, I am loved by God, I am loved by, redeemed by Christ, I am a friend of God, I am capable of more than I know, I am going to see God do wonders today. These two words, I am, they literally are God's identity. He identifies himself in the Old Testament that way, God the Father, and Jesus does the same thing in the New Testament. He says, tell them that I am sent you. My friends, it's absolutely critical that whatever word we put after that I am, remains uplifting, okay? Because you are enough. God values you, okay? In these I am teachings, it makes me think of what we have here at Step 7. We have our values. These values, years ago, Tom and I took about a month, and we sat down. We got together every morning, 9 o'clock, and we prayed through these values here. And it was, it was a lot of fun. We were going to try to keep them to seven. This is step seven. We're going to have seven values. We couldn't do it. We got to ten. Still couldn't do it. We ended up at twelve. And we said, that's enough. And they're, they're written up here. The one that sticks out above all of them, folks, is right here. That's foundational. Christ-centered spiritual growth. Everything rises and falls on Christ-centered spiritual growth, okay? We didn't have any problems coming up with that one. Happened like that, we said that's it. That is foundational to everything that we do here at Step 7, getting on a path towards our highest standard, okay? Let's, uh, let's have a Father God, I, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for this ministry. Lord, I lift up a special prayer for the Rhodes family this morning. I pray that you give them some comfort in the pain that they're going through right now. I thank you for this ministry, Lord. And a word for you, Satan. Your attempts at discouragement are doing nothing but inspiring me. Amen. You are a defeated foe, and the Lord has told me that all is well. He has my back.
just ask that you'd speak through me today. I pray this in your precious name. This week, in, in praying through this message, I noticed something about our values here, okay? We start with the foundational one, <coughs> CCSG, Christ-Centered Spiritual Growth, okay? And then we, we have these others, prayer, study, community, truth, freedom, purpose, commitment, fr leadership, fun, love, Sabbath. We, we value all of those. Now, obviously, that's not an exhaustive list. It's, it's hung true for years now with us. We haven't changed any of it. But we have lots of values. Okay? Something hit me a little bit when I was looking at this. And I noticed that these values aren't worth a hill of beans if they're not combined with one of the values here. We have one value here that has to go with every value on the board or it's worthless. Who might be able to tell me what that value is that needs to be married to the others? Love. Love? That's good. CCSG. Huh? What did I hear? Commitment. Commitment. There are no wrong answers here, but this is the one I'm hanging on right here. Randy gets it. Commitment. Okay? We have to be committed to this, to this, to this. It's about commitment, my folks, my friends, my folks. Um, you know, we all have different values. I, personally, that's number one for me, right there. No questions about it. I value my spiritual growth on a daily basis. All right? I value, I value my family, my daughter, my bride. Okay? I value my sobriety. Been sober a long time now. Means a lot to me that today I stand up here sober. But it's a relative word, okay? Value is a relative word. It's relative to the person who's sharing it. We all have different values, okay? Some people have good values. Some people not so good, okay? We look around the world. It's a dark world out there. There are people. There are organizations. There are countries that I believe have dark values, okay? Satan, your enemy, has values, friends, okay? Don't kid yourself. So I like to ask questions around here. And we're going to start with a couple of them. First question today, and I want you to think honestly about this. What is it that you value? What is it in your life that you value? And then right on top of that, we have to ask, how committed are you to that value? Because there's a big difference, folks. And I want to take a a minute right now because I've kind of thrown a wet blanket on this message at the start here. But I got sober a long time ago. Okay. And I'm very thankful for that. I value my sobriety as I just mentioned. This is step seven. We, we work with folks that are struggling with substance abuse. I remember back in the day when I thought <coughs> about getting sober and not drinking. <coughs> that was beyond my comprehension. Not using. That was was more than I thought I could handle. But the good Lord allowed me to get committed to the value of sobriety. Okay? And I want to take a second right now and lift up everybody in the room that is sober today. I thank you for your commitment, because that's a big one, folks. Okay? I praise the Lord 
you know, I want to I wanna pound this word commitment today. We've been talking a lot around here about wanting to raise the standard at step seven. And folks, as Brian mentioned, there's our standard right there. And something that I've noticed in my life over the last so many years, and this just came to me this week too, I share this oftentimes in small groups. I've often said to the men, I've said, you know what guys, I'll be happy if you are simply sober, somewhat happy, and walking on a path towards the Lord. Okay, now that's great stuff. That's wonderful stuff. I'll be happy if you're happy, you're sober, and you're on a path towards Christ. Especially that last one. That's a big one, you know. If you're on a path towards Christ. But to tell you the truth, in saying that, while it's great stuff, in my mind, it has an air of settling, okay? And, and it's creeped into my life, folks. I have, after all of these years, you guys, working with men that are struggling with drugs and alcohol, maybe for self-protection, maybe so I don't burn out in this position, I have lowered my standards. Okay? I've lowered my standards for myself and the men that I serve. I want more for you, you guys. And it doesn't matter what I want. Jesus wants more for us, okay? Always raising the standard. That's Christ-centered spiritual growth. That's getting on the path and moving that way towards Him. You know, there's a best-selling book that came out years ago. It's called Good to Great. And we like to use a <coughs> line that comes out of this book. And that line is that the enemy of the best is oftentimes the good. Wow. That's a powerful line, you guys. The enemy of the best is oftentimes the good. Jesus wants the best for us. He wants us to settle for nothing. He wants us to daily raise the standard. And in doing that, I see some pruning that might be happening around here, and that is just fine. Because we come into these doors and we look to Him. Period. You know, years ago when the hospital opened up, I volunteered. I've been a volunteer chaplain at the hospital since the day they opened the doors. And I used to go sit in on rounds. And I would do it three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I would go sit in on rounds. The, the nurses would come in and they would report to us, okay? I really learned a great affection and respect for nurses at the hospital, what they go through. Because they would come in and they would report on their, on their rooms. You know. Mrs. So-and-so in 134 is, is just a sweetheart. I just love her to death. You know. Mr. Jones in 132, I can't wait for him to get out of here. Okay. I would sit and I would listen to these, but most of the time I'd have my computer in front of me and I'd be doing something, working on something, maybe a message. And I'd be there for two to three hours, three times a week. They might come across someone that has pancreatitis. My, my antennas would go up, probably someone struggling with alcohol. And they might say, uh, Pastor, maybe you could go visit them. I'd go do it right then and there. I would go visit them. And I did this three days a week for hours. And it finally came to me that this isn't what the Lord would have me be doing right now. It was all really good. But it wasn't the best. He gave me this. 
this vision for step seven. And I was somewhat killing time sitting over there at the hospital. He wants the best for us, you guys. And he wants us to get committed to that. Okay? I mentioned a minute ago that the word value is relative. It's relative to the individual. There is nothing relative about the word commitment. You cannot be a little bit committed. There is no such thing, okay? It's kind of like what they say, kind of like being a little bit what? Pregnant, okay? Can't do that. Commitment's a big word, you guys. It's a strong word. If I'm committed to something, I'm committed to it. I'm committed to my marriage. I'll be married to this woman till the day I die. We can't keep slipping and falling with drugs and alcohol and say that I'm committed to my sobriety, because that's a lie. Commitment is commitment, okay? The difference, and we were talking about this just last night, when we have a commitment that we don't keep, it's what? It's just a good intention. <coughs> and there's another saying out there that says what? Yeah, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Boom! The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Good intentions, my friends, are worthless if they are not married to commitment. Again, I ask you the question this morning. What is it that you value? And another one. How well is that serving you? You know, I struggle. I have, <coughs> I have a huge value of health. But I get very upset with myself because I think I could be a little bit more committed to my health. Today I want to just look at a, a quick story here. Turn to Matthew chapter 6. Some verses we've all seen. I, hopefully maybe we can put a little bit of a different light on these verses today. And today, the value again that we're lifting up so high and we're going to continue to do around here is Christ-centered spiritual growth. Everything rises and falls on where you put this. Please listen to this. Everything rises and falls on where you place this in your set of values. Christ-centered spiritual growth. Famous verses in Matthew 6. Do not worry. I'm going to start in verse 25 and I'm going to read through the end of the chapter. So just hang with me here. Verse 25. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away in barns? Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Keep your finger there. Notice what it says. Are you not much more valuable than they? Tells me what? Tells me that God values That's a biggie. I hope you all leave here feeling that in your heart today. God values you. Verse 28. It says, And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow, they do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow was thrown into the fire, 
will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Wonderful verses, folks. And you know, sometimes I need the Lord to talk to me like I'm a second grader, okay? I need very basic, simple instructions. Okay? These verses here are very famous for do not worry, okay? But there are two words in these verses that just jumped off the page at me this last week. Who can tell me what those are? Two words. Seek first. Okay? These are red letters. This is Jesus. And he starts off the sentence with, but. That means some powerful stuff is coming. And then a very simple <coughs> instruction. He says what? He says, seek first, you guys. That's some basic instructions there. And I tell you what, I'm thankful that he's told me, PT, first thing you need to do is you need to seek your relationship with me, okay? The whole story before that is prefaced with don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And as individuals, as, as human beings, what is it that we worry about in our life? It's stuff. I worry about the balance in my checkbook, I worry about my job, I worry about what people are thinking of me. He says here, so do not worry saying what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear. We spend our lives worrying about the trivial. He says I need you to leave that behind, because I need you first. Here's what, you're got, here's what your instructions are today. You are to seek first my kingdom, okay? And then he goes on to say, and all that other stuff will take care of itself. All of that will be added. But that's not how we live our lives, folks. You know, go to bed at the end of the day, hit the pillow, think about, wow, great day at work, got this done, got that done. You know, close that deal, did this, did that. Awesome, gonna sleep like a baby tonight. When's the last time we honestly hit the pillow and said, you know, how much time did I spend with the Lord today? Because that's what he's telling us to do here. It's number one, guys. It's number one. You know? It's not get up on Sabbath morning and decide whether I'm gonna go to work or I'm gonna go to the church. He tells us here what to do. It's simple. It's when we do things our way that we get into trouble. And he says, I'll bless you if you'll simply listen to me. You know, last time I'll make you turn anywhere. Turn to Isaiah, to your left, Isaiah 53. saw in, in Matthew 6 that Jesus says, are you not more valuable than they? Okay. It's imperative, my friends, that we understand today that Jesus values me. Okay? And in doing so, Jesus was 
committed to me, all right? And he proves that to us with the cross of Calvary. There is not a greater illustration in the history of the world of commitment and value than the cross of Christ. And I always like to finish a sermon at the cross. Isaiah 53 is back in the Old Testament, one of my favorite chapters in the Old Testament. And if you don't see Jesus in this chapter, you're blind, okay? Uh, I don't like to go here, but our, our Jewish friends have a hard time with Isaiah 53, folks. Okay? This is all about Jesus. All right? And this is on our side. Um, I'm going to start in verse 3. Isaiah 53, <coughs> verse 3. It says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. One of my favorite verses in all of scripture, verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. And folks, I hope and pray that the thought of the cross brings you peace. Okay? that's what he's telling us here. He was crushed for our iniquities. And it's by his wounds, my friends, that we are healed. Okay? I value that. I value that a lot. Jesus loves you. He values you. And he's committed to you. And he asks us today to please get on this path right here. Leave everything behind. Because this is the, this is the way right here. Christ-centered spiritual growth. And here at Step 7, that means from this day forward, daily raising the standard. I ask you in closing here this morning to find your values. Okay? Find your values. <coughs> Make sure that they're Christ centered. And then finally, commit to them. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we. We thank you, Jesus, for your commitment and what it means to us. Lord, I, I thank you that you've given us this message here at Step 7 right now that might be having a bit of a pruning effect, that we are going to get on this path and we're going to stay on this path. And it's all about you. It's not about us. That we are going to seek first our relationship with you, Jesus. I thank you for these friends. And Lord, right now I thank you for this message that you've given us today. We love you. We thank you. And we pray this as always in that precious name.